I'm not ashamed. What is the Feast of Dedication? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of John on walking through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to John chapter 10. We're going to be reading from verses 22 to 30. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So John chapter 10, beginning at verse 22. Now it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Jesus has been teaching in Jerusalem about being the good shepherd and the door of the sheep, meaning that he is the only one who would lead people to eternal life, the good shepherd and the only one through whom one could obtain eternal life, the door. In saying that he was the only good shepherd and the only door, Jesus was claiming to be God, something that will come into play starting with today's lesson. So beginning with verse 22, the context has changed from earlier on in the chapter, for it was now winter in Jerusalem, and in the case of this context, it is mid-December. Jesus again had returned to Jerusalem, most likely from Perea, where he was spending much of the last few months preaching. Why was Jesus in Jerusalem? Because the Jews were celebrating the Feast of Dedication. Now regular listeners might sound confused, for in our studies of Leviticus and Numbers we did not read of such a feast, and that is true. In fact, this feast is not mentioned anywhere else in scriptures, meaning that this wasn't a religious feast that was commanded by God. However, when we get to our study of Esther and the establishment of Purim, and later during our study of Romans, we find that God allows man to esteem certain days above others in order to commemorate events that happen, as long as these feasts do not contradict God's law and are not made compulsory in order for someone to be viewed as obeying God's law, these are fine. So if scriptures don't refer to this feast anywhere else but here in John, what is the Feast of Dedication? Today we would know this feast as Hanukkah. And the reason we don't read of it anywhere else in Scripture is because it was instituted by the Jews during the 400 years of silence between the end of Malachi and the beginning of Matthew. In order for us to learn more about it, we'll have to consult what are known as the Apocrypha, which are additional books that are added to the Old Testament in some Bibles, especially among the Catholics. They are not inspired of God, as is evident not only because some of them claim not to be, but also because some of what is written contradicts scripture that we know is inspired. However, even with this being true, the history contained in some of them can help illuminate the period of silence and can help us here in our understanding of the Feast of Dedication. And so I'm going to use the Apocryphal Book of 2 Maccabees as a commentary for this purpose. The version I'll be reading from is the New Revised Standard Version Bible Catholic Edition and its copyright information is now on the screen. So in 2 Maccabees 10, verses 1 to 8, it is written, Now Maccabeus and his followers, the Lord leading them on, recovered the temple and the city. They tore down the altars that had been built in the public square by the foreigners and also destroyed the sacred precincts. They purified the sanctuary and made another altar of sacrifice. Then, striking fire out of flint, they offered sacrifices after a lapse of two years, and they offered incense and lighted lamps and set out the bread of the presence, which is the showbread. When they had done this, they fell prostrate and implored the Lord that they might never again fall into such misfortunes, but that, if they should ever sin, they might be disciplined by him with forbearance and not be handed over to blasphemous and barbarous nations. It happened on the same day on which the sanctuary had been profaned by the foreigners, 
the purification of the sanctuary took place, that is, on the 25th day of the same month, which was Chislev. They celebrated it for eight days with rejoicing in the manner of the Festival of Booths, remembering how not long before, during the Festival of Booths, they had been wandering in the mountains and caves like wild animals. Therefore, carrying ivy-wreathed wands and beautiful branches, and also fronds of palm, they offered hymns of thanksgiving to him who had given success to the purifying of his holy place. They decreed by public edict, ratified by vote, that the whole nation of the Jews should observe these days every year. Verse 8 of 2 Maccabees 10 makes it quite clear that this feast, which commemorated the rededication of the temple after it had been defiled by Antiochus Epiphanes, was a civil holiday made by the Jews, not one commanded by God. However, the Jews celebrated it every year, and whether or not Jesus observed it is left unsaid by John, but at the very least he was in Jerusalem for it, for that is where the Jews were. Coming back to the book of John now, Jesus is on the temple grounds in the place known as Solomon's Porch. Solomon's Porch was a structure on the east side of the temple and was covered with a roof, providing people with more protection from the weather than the temple courtyards could. While here, the Jews surrounded Jesus and asked, them, asked him to remove all doubts from among them as to whether he was the Christ. Now, of course, Jesus had been teaching that he was the Christ all along, yet there was constant division over this caused by unbelief. Jesus told them that much. In truth, Jesus' works done in the Father's name were the testimony that they needed to know that Jesus was the Christ. The cause of their unbelief was that they were not Christ's sheep, for they had not for had they been Christ's sheep, they would have heard Jesus' voice and followed him. This saying hearkens us back to John chapter ten, verses three and four, which said To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And he and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. How were these Jews not Jesus' sheep? Because after all, weren't the Jews God's chosen people? Physically, that is true. But had they been truly obedient to God, they would not have disobeyed uh, Jesus. For Jesus was foretold in the Old Testament. It's not that God had made it impossible for these people to know the truth. It is that these people were unwilling to accept the truth. If Jesus would, would have said that he was the Christ here again, they would have likely asked for proof again. Jesus had already done enough to prove who he was. If people didn't believe after that, they would only have themselves to blame and have, and have made it known that they are not Christ's sheep, for Christ's sheep follow him. And to these sheep, Jesus gives eternal life, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand, for Jesus and the Father are one, meaning united. This does not teach that one can never be lost once they're saved, for even in this passage, the Jews who should have been saved were in fact lost. What it is saying is that God is fully able to save those who in faith believe in Jesus. The devil cannot snatch people unwillingly out of God's hand. But people can choose to walk away. And if we walk away, God will try to chasten us. But if we will not heed, he will allow us to walk away and be lost. This is a lesson that we need to heed. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of John chapter 10, verses 31 to 42, as we continue our walk through the Bible. One verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Amen.